All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Telemetria mod, which is being made by user Bad Rocket. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a handy little info panel, which will give you some useful flight information, but also adds in some very nifty flight and camera controls, all of which is pretty cool. So let's uh, jump into the rocket I have here on the launch pad and talk about what we get and how to use it. Now, as you can see here, a telemetria info panel has already popped up and it's currently in this location because uh, this is where I moved it to last. By default, when you start the mod up, it'll be roughly down here, but it remembers where you left it. So after a flight is done, if you moved it over to this location, next flight you start up, it's going to be there, which is quite handy. I do enjoy that. Now, if you don't want this info panel turned on for whatever reason, you can simply hit F7 and it'll go away. And if you hit it again, boom, we have it back once more. And as for the information we do have, it's a pretty simple little list, but a very handy one. We of course start here with the apoapsis and then the periapsis, which both are currently blank because we are stationary and on the ground. We then have our location in lat long, which is very handy if you are landed on a planet and trying to navigate around with a rover. And then we have our speed, which of course currently is zero kilometers per hour and miles per hour because again, we're stationary on the planet. Now what's fun about these bottom two, the location speed, is they will actually change while in flight. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Let's talk a little bit more about the controls though that are added in. And to take a look at those, we can actually hit Alt F7, as you can see there, for us to bring up the Telemetria key map. And as you can see up at the top, we can change these key bindings in the Telemetria config file, which we'll actually take a look at here in a moment, as there's some other useful info in there. But, of course, it also lets you change all of these buttons. And it's quite cool, because it also does show us uh, all the different functions we have here. So of course the first one it is showing is the hide button, once again being F7. We then also have prograde and retrograde on F6 and F8 by default. And what that does, if we turn on our SES, normally when you're in flight you can of course click either the prograde or retrograde buttons down here, so that the navigation system will automatically try and go towards those two points. But with this mod, well, you have a key binding for that now. It's just something small, but it's a handy little convenience. So for F6, we'll go to prograde. F8, we'll go to retrograde, which of course won't do anything right now because we don't have a prograde or retrograde point at the moment, but I'll show that off once we get in flight. We then have the SAS mode, which we can toggle between, of course, surface, or orbit by hitting Y. Again, it's just something we normally have that we can do, but it's just a nice convenience, which actually, oh yeah, I forgot when we hit to switch it over to orbit, we do have those buttons. So uh, if you do look, take a look at those down there, if I hit F6, there we go, it goes to prograde. And if I hit F8, boom, there we are, it goes to the retrograde button. Excellent, I forgot it changes that even if we're stationary. Good times. Now we then have a mute button, which I'm not gonna click right now because I'm making a video and sound is important, but this, if you hit keypad divide, it will mute all in-game sound. I don't really know why you'd want to do that, I guess if your rocket's super loud, but hey, it's an option. You can toggle a mute. Now the next is warp to node. Again, just another feature you already have in the game, but with this mod, you now have the ability to hit Alt F8 and you will warp 
to your next navigational node, which is a very handy. And the final bits that we have down here are all custom camera controls, which are pretty cool. So we can snap the camera to zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then a custom camera snap that you can set in the config file. So if we start at the zero degrees, with simply Alt F6, there we go, change the camera. And then if we go over to Alt Keypad 6, we hit that, there we go, we change to 90, then to the 180, and then to the 270, and then finally Alt Y for the custom camera snap angle, which is pretty cool. Now, I'll talk again about the custom angle uh, in a moment once we're in the config file, once I show that on the screen. But for now, let's actually jump into a flight. Well, no, I just, you know, take this rocket off and show off how these change. And I do love it. So if we do throttle ourselves up, which I mean, we're actually gonna be using solid rocket boosters for the first bit, uh, so no real need for that. But pay attention to the location and the speed especially. Now the apoapsis and periapsis of course will begin to update themselves as we begin to fly and that is useful info to have but in my mind the most useful info is on these two. So if we do a launch you can see our speed is accelerating. We now have a periapsis and notice that the location now is changing to inclination and the speed has changed to guidance. Now on the inclination, it's quite cool. We do still have our lat long coordinates, but it's now showing us how we're changing, how we're moving from those positions through our inclination. If I angle us more, you can see that that number greatly increasing, changing that location, which is pretty cool. And I may also notice on guidance that just showed us Mach 1. That'll flash up different useful bits of information like thrust high, if we've achieved max Q, and it's other fun little helpful things like that. But the most important part here is the guidance. Now this, this is cool. It's going to show us, well, our current thrust away ratio, our current speed, and then what angle we need to go and fly at to achieve our ideal gravity turn. Here's the thing, that is set in the config file, so it's not the easiest thing to change and it's something you can't change on the fly, but once you have changed in the config file, it's a very useful thing to have as it's telling us how I should be flying right now, which I most certainly am not. <laughs> and it's just a handy little tool just to help you sort of keep in mind where you should be flying. And of course, showing us our currently our apoapsis is way too high for the turn I have set because I'm definitely not following it. Now, if I actually pop on the screen right now the config file, so we can have a little talk about that, you'll see up at the first part of it, the window X and Y, and that is where the telemetry info panel will pop into existence when you do start flying. We then have the warp node margin, which is a time in seconds that'll have as a buffer uh, between when, or uh, until you reach your maneuver node when you do go to warp, which is quite handy. So you can set how long you have before, which is cool. Now next, and this is the important part for the guidance, we have three options. The ascent turn start, ascent turn end, and ascent end angle final and these are the three criteria that you're wanting to set as your ideal gravity turn for your launch to get yourself into space and that is what the guidance system will use to calculate how well you're doing or in my case how far you are off and I, I do like that so if you do run a lot of the same missions like a cargo a typical cargo mission or you're launching a constellation of satellites you change that once in the config file and it's good for multiple launches again the problem is if you're suddenly doing a different kind of mission you would have to leave the game change it in the config file and jump back in 
for guidance to actually work with what you're now wanting to do. So it's not the easiest thing. I'd really love if there was an in-game way of changing it, but sadly there is not. But it's still a handy tool for those, you know, typical missions you do. And then the final options here on the config file are the various key bindings for all those options we did show off a moment ago. The hide, the switch to prograde, retrograde, etc. And then at the very bottom we have the snap camera custom, which again, we can change the key binding there, but more importantly, we can change the angle of the camera heading as well as the pitch of the camera so that you can change that to whatever custom setting you're wanting to have for your custom camera option. And again, just a fun little set of options and tools. And I really love it. The info panel itself is more than worth it in my mind, as it's great having just easily viewable your apoapsis, periapsis, your inclination, and when you're on a rover on a planet, your actual location. And then your speed and the guidance system are all cool things. Then when you throw onto that the cool new key bindings, like our fun retrograde or prograde, and as well as all the camera toggles, it's just a handy, useful little plugin. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual but that is gonna be it for today my friends i hope you all have enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one